Gintoki versus Kamui. I'm not going to lie, I have sort of been looking forward to this happening since uh, Yoshiwara in Flames sort of kind of told us up front all the way back then that this was going to happen, that Kamui was going to force a very, very difficult, ugly situation into happening, severely damaging Kagura's dreams of bringing her family back together. And Umibosa asks, what would Gintoki do in that case? These chapters are the answer. I'm a bit of backtracking first, because I haven't really discussed any of this. Utsura just fought Umibosu. Utsura, I can't wait to do my video on you, but that's for another time entirely. Long story short, Umibosu is not in a good state right now, he's all but dead, but Kamui still wants to fight. He is so fixated on wanting to surpass his father, to become stronger than the man who he views as the cause of his mother's death. And blaming Umibozu isn't entirely unwarranted, I don't think. Had Umibozu not met Koka, Koka would surely still be alive today. Of course, none of this family would not exist at all if she had not gone with Umibozu. She went willingly so she could be with him, fully aware of the consequences. Uh, Kamui and Kagura would not be here at all if she had not done so, if she had not died. And so there is an extent to which you could say that she died for her family, but she did it so because they made her happy. She did it for her own sake, largely, because such a short life surrounded by the people she loved would be better than an endless life alone. Kamui, however, cannot really see that he can't... He can't respect that decision, I guess you could say, because it hurt him so much, because he loved her so much. And there is an extent to which you can see, it's always the Shoyo parallels here. There is, of course, the Altana issue, which I'll discuss some other time. Usura, Ka Koka both have uh, Altana, they're both effectively immortal. But Shoyo and Koka, they both give up their lives so their students slash family could live. Gintoki, Zura, Kagura, they live on, whereas Takasugi, Kamui fall into despair. They're so traumatized by this loss that they essentially end up dishonoring the wishes of their lost loved one in an attempt to avenge them against whatever took them away, be it the world in Takasugi's case, or be it Umibozu in, uh, in Kamui's case. They're actually very similar characters, and it makes a lot of sense to me that the two of them work together quite well. That being said, there is an extent to which Kamui's actions read a bit more irrational, I guess you could say, than Takasugi's. This isn't a bad thing at all. People aren't always rational, and it's a really bold writing decision, I think, to make a character that acts so irrationally when that sort of character has a tendency to come across as quite unlikable at times to readers. And for me, at least, he's not really coming across that way. <clears throat> Perhaps I just know it's because what Kamui means to Kagura, so I want him to be able to live for her sake, but he's honestly reading a lot more as lost and hurting and just lashing out at everything than anything else. That doesn't make what he's doing okay. He's completely, completely out of line. But to an extent, I guess you could say that if his actions were rational, if they did make sense, if it, what he were doing what were justifiable, he wouldn't really be the villain to begin with. Sarashi may be pushing Kamali's character beyond the realm of antagonist and into the realm of villain. I mean... I really, like, I want to see Kamui redeemed, of course. I want to see him have his redemption arc. I really do. However, I do also see the merits in the alternative. Especially, as I said earlier, Takasuki and Kamui, they're quite similar. Takasuki seems as though he may be getting set up for something of a redemption. And it might be tragically fitting for the other of the pair to uh, destroy himself in his grief as sort of, sort of, like, juxtaposition. Maybe it will. Maybe it won't. Obviously... What I would want would be for Kagura to ultimately break up the fight between Gin and Kamui, go to Kamui, stop him, and have him break down crying, the crybaby big brother that we know him to be. But maybe some combination of the two. I'm not really that good at predicting fights, you know, it comes identify a common plot and character and thematic threads. Yeah, yeah, that's for it. But how the author is going to actually use those and make them into a story, there are just so many possibilities, and I'm not very good at predicting. Not necessarily very good at predicting in that regard. Regardless, I do want to address a complaint that I have seen about these chapters. That this isn't Gintoki's fight. This is Kagura's fight, and so Sarachi is somehow doing her a disservice by having Gintoki step up to the plate. I personally do not have any issue with the fact that Gintoki is fighting Kamui right now instead of Kagura. Number one, Kagura has fought Kamui to an extent already. Num 
it's basically like the very simple reasons Kagura's fought Kamui, and we were told up front that Gintoki and Kamui were going to fight eventually, that Kamui really wants to do it. But with regards to the future, with regards to the fight itself, one, the fight is not even over yet. Gintoki is currently managing against Kamui, not because he's more skilled, but because he refuses to give up. Kamui is the stronger one in this situation. Gintoki essentially said that up front. In time, Gintoki is going to be worn down, and at that point, I imagine that Kagura is going to step in. She's not going to allow her brother to kill Gintoki. Regardless, if we look at the past, all of these times where Gintoki has attempted to go at it alone to try and confront issues so the kids don't need to, four devas, beam saber are the first two that come to mind, Kagura and Shinpachi, they, they, they have none of it. I don't see why this, to this time would be any different. They're going, they're going to intervene eventually. We're just in the middle of the fight. Two, the reasoning that Gintoki provides for this, aka Yorozuya feels. He gives us no reason to believe that he is somehow trying to take Kagura's place here. He's not trying to fight Kamui instead of Kagura. He's trying to fight Kamui for her sake, to assist her and to stand at her side. The difference is subtle, I think, but it's important. In one sense, it's just character development for Gintoki. He's not trying to prevent the kids from fighting difficult battles as he did with Hajime and Shinpachi, for example. But really, he just openly admits the love that he has for the, the Yorosia. How they will always stand beside each other and help each other fight their battles. They are a family, regardless of blood, and I love it. Because it stands in such stark contrast to this blood family that is so broken that Kagura has sort of lost. Like, on that note, there is an interesting line from Kamu here. He complains that Gintoki is forcing him to destroy Kagura's family. Again. Like... The Kagura has found a second family in Gia and Gintoki and Shinpachi, we of course know. However, for Kamui to note that, and for Kamui not to want to do that to Kagura, we of course see his lingering love for his sister here. It's faint, but he is the one primarily hurting her here. He realizes that, and I think he feels a degree of guilt for that, some degree of hesitation, some degree of love. If he will be saved, it will obviously be because of her, not because of what Gintoki says. What Gintoki says might bring him to his breaking point, but that's not going, but bringing him to his breaking point is just the setup for what would happen afterward, and I think that would be where Kagura is going to step in. And there's just this sadness that he believes that his initial Yato family itself is entirely gone, and he realizes that it is, it is in part his own fault. He is very sad character the more I think about it. He says he thinks he's gone to a point where he can't really turn back anymore. That there's no way out of this situation that he's created. And if there is one message you're going to learn from Gintama, it's that a person always has the ability to live again in spite of mistakes that they've made, in spite of whatever the suffering the world has put them through. And the question is, how is Sorachi going to use Kamui's character to illustrate this point? Is he going to bring him back from this terrible state, or is he going to allow Kamui to follow this path to the end, making clear to us that he could have turned back and saved himself, but he chose not to by his own free will, and to sort of showcase the fact that you can't always reach people, that at best you can really only help them save themselves. So that goes back to Baragaki, actually, with Ichikata and Tetsunosuke parallels. They keep coming. Regardless, the pressure is on Kamui, and only time will really tell what happens. Let's talk about emptiness. There's a lot of discussion here. We've got Utsuro, we've got Gintoki, we've, we've got Kamui. Utsuro first, because he's not as related to this. I'll be quick. Utsuro, we know he feels that he has a completely empty existence. That's what, that's what Utsuro means. Um, and so, obviously, this is going to tie a lot into the wider plot of the story in time, whatever we, what, what the, whatever the resolution of this conflict here is. Then we have Kamui. What's interesting about Kamui is that Kamui seems to be realizing that his existence is sort of, his seeking strength, uh, nothing else, it's completely empty. Gintoki's telling it to him. But what's interesting is that Hosen told him this, all the way back in Yoshiwara in Flames, that if Kamui continues to follow the path that he is taking right now, that he is going to find in the end that there is nothing left for him. Gintoki points out to Kamui that Kamui's 
endless quests for strength, for strength without purpose, without strength trying to direct it towards protecting something, that there is absolutely no meaning to that, that it's completely empty. And obviously Kamui is realizing this. However, there's an extent to which Gintoki himself is the answer to the despair that Gintoki is pushing Kamui to. That Gintoki has suffered so much He's struggled to find good in the world, because obviously it's put him through so many awful things, and there's chasing after nothingness. But then he found something. He found Shinpachi and Kagura. It's just like, you get so... It's so heartwarming. I, everybody in Kabukicho, but we obviously point out Kagura and Shinpachi in particular, how much he really means to them. We We've sort of known all along that... Shinpachi and Kagura are effectively saved Gintoki, that they helped him through all of the uh, suffering that he's been through, that all of the first 300 episodes of the of Gintama are, in effect, you could say, Gintoki slowly, it's like through all the comedy, throughout all the nonsense, slowly coming to love life again, slowly coming to find joy in the world again, getting over all of the awfulness that the world has put him through. And here, we see him op openly admit it in front of Shinfachi and Kagura, and it's just like, oh my gosh, he told them, he told them how much he loves them, and it's, it's all sweet. But you wonder what Kamui is going to take from this. Is he going to take a route similar to, Gi to Gintoki? Is he going to realize that? Is he going to seek to fill that emptiness with the people that he loves, because he still has Kagura. Umibozu may or may not be alive, but there is hope for him. There is. It is just a question of whether he's going to take it or not, as Gintoki eventually did. So it's so like an interesting parallel. You wouldn't really, you weren't, I'd never expected to see Gintoki and Kamui parallels, but they're there. They're there. Honestly, the parallels are with a significant portion of the cast that so many people in Gintama are just dealing with the issues of feeling sort of meaningless in life and then finding meaning just in the people that they love. And I think that that is one of the most important things about Gintama, which is why I think that sort of thing is actually ultimately going to be very important when it comes to the resolution of the Itsura subplot, which I will be making a video about in the near future that I'm really excited about, the Utsuro video. But I think that's all I have to say about Gintama 584 and Gintama 585. 586 has been released. I've actually seen a few of the spoiler images for it and it's it's gonna be it's gonna be a it's gonna be a tough one to read. But I will have a review for that one out shortly. Thank you for watching. I'll see you soon.